Welcome to a healthy living video blog at WorkoutMaster.com. This is Ruben. This is Aaron. Today we're going to talk about endotoxins. Endotoxins mean, endo means within your body, toxin is a toxin. They're released by bacteria and they tend to affect our digestive tract quite negatively. Uh, worse of the health we are in, the more they affect us, the better the health we are in, uh, the easier we have time to deal with it. Uh, so let's turn this one apart. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it. Okay. I think we have touched bases in another episode or in previous episodes on regards to the effect of, of the feeding of this particular bacteria that we have in the lower uh, part of our intestine, which is basically uh, bacterial growth that like everybody should have and must have in order to have proper digestion and a healthy uh, life. But what often happens, you know, what oftentimes happens is that these bacteria tend to proliferate at a very, very fast pace due to the foods that we consume and this can have a detrimental effect on our health. Being the case that in, the, in uh, certain cases when we consume certain fats and certain polysaccharides, certain sugars, you would actually feed this type of bacteria and the bacteria will grow on an alarming rate. They will actually become overburdened by the space that they live in and they start moving closer towards the upper part of your digestive tract, meaning the stomach. When this happens, you know, all this overgrowth of these bacteria can have a negative effect on the health in the basis that it will actually begin to have contact with the lining of your stomach cells. And this will become irritated and they will begin to secrete more and more serotonin. Well, this serotonin is going to have another, you know, another side effect that not only is it an anti-inflammatory state when it's produced in enlarged in a prolonged period of time, it also begins to actually raise the level of estrogen in your body and at the same time begin you know, the pro-inflammatory mediators that can cause intestinal or digestive tract systemic inflammation. For a regular uh, lay people, what it generally means, you're going to have like water retention, you're going to get bloated, you're going to can't get constipated, you're going to pass probably a smelly stools, or dry stools, and things like that. You basically, you're going to mess up your digestive tract. That's yeah? correct. Uh, that's in a simple term. Now, there's a few things you should know about endotoxins. We feed the bacteria, therefore we can create an excessive load on our body of those endotoxins. So there's a few ways to operate. Let's say if you go to a health food store, you see a lot of probiotics and the fermented foods. So people uh, recommend to fight with a, what's called unfriendly bacteria by introducing a friendly bacteria. So you basically create another war in your body mm -hmm. where friendly fights with unfriendly, God knows who's gonna win. Uh, I think there should be a little bit more of a, a, a rounder approach. So the first thing, you don't feed the bacteria. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's one thing that if you listen to somebody, let's say like Doc Kaufman, uh, fungus ling, they say bacteria eat sugar, therefore you shouldn't feed bacteria with the sugar. If you don't feed the bacteria with the sugar, it should die off. What well, we also discussed in previous episodes, that if you don't feed the bacteria at all, it actually goes and starts hunting for more food, and chances are it goes in systemic response. Right. Yeah. Then we'll move to other parts so of the body looking we, we for We do sugar. need to provide sugar. Yes. What we don't want to provide is we don't want to provide a lot of things that sit in your gut and sits undigested and feeds off the bacteria. And that's why we talk about we want to consume easily digestible foods. And the foods that are easily digestible, they tend to be more liquid, they don't have a lot of cellulose. So let's name the foods. For example, gelatinous broth, easy to digest, yes, provides you with good uh, nutrition does not provide nutrition for unfriendly bacteria. Good. Yeah. Then dairy products. Dairy products. Milk, cheese, and the sore. Yes. Now, then we have, uh, for example, if you even just do like a simple syrup, That's it's correct. easily digestible in the upper part of your digestive tract, right. so it does not feed the bacteria. The things that are feeding your bacteria are things that have a lot of roughage or a lot of basically fiber. Right, and in some instances, you know, also, which is recommended as a health food, it would be fermented foods. Fermented food for a normal in the way of processing, they create a lot of lactic acid, which we know for a fact is something that the body will produce under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So it's no, it doesn't make a lot of sense when the digestive tract is actually being compromised or being stressed out to add any more lactic acid into the mix. It would only make matters worse. That's true. There, there are some people, they don't feel good on the fermented foods, just a fact. Yes. 
So if you don't feel good on the fermented foods, just don't eat it. Uh, you do want to introduce the foods that are actually going to make you feel better. So definitely check into gelatinous broth, dairy, eggs, uh, sugar, fruit juices without the fiber, mm -hmm. and things like that. What else do you want to mention? Well, as the body gets better and better, you can start introducing more fruits mm -hmm. in, in, as a whole, you know, instead of just being the use. Correct. Yes. And if you feel that the body is actually doing okay in some uh, fermented foods, go right ahead. It has to be pretty much up to the individual. It's very, very subjective. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing about endotoxins. They're neither good or bad. It's just when your body challenged, uh, it has a very hard to protect itself from it. Uh, when you have a healthy body, this shouldn't be really truly your concern. Your body is perfectly designed to handle it without any problem at all. Uh, that is only uh, a problem when you're not healthy. Uh, there's a few things you can use. Uh, I think we mentioned the carrot salad. Did we do it? Yes, carrot, carrot salad, salad or bamboo. Carrot salad bamboo, is good. Bamboo, uh, bamboo shoots, that's a Ray Pete recommends. Uh, are great for absorbing the antitoxins and actually acts like a natural anti-inflammatory. Right, antibiotic. stripping them away and providing, you know, something that, they, that the fiber itself will absorb, easy to, fairly easy to digest, and it has a, a double effect in that sense. There you go. So this is what our um, the toxins are. It's important to understand it. I think we try to do it as simple as we can. You want to say anything? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. Okay. All right, guys, remember, if you eat a good food that does not feed your bacteria, uh, and does not create that reaction, then your future looks better already. If you share this episode with your friends, then your future looks better too. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next time.